Hello everybody, so here I am for the second part of the tutorial where we will be making the little holders that are going to hold our bottles of wine. The one thing that I did want to do was, in the first video, I showed you how to resize something down a little bit and that you had to apply that scale in order for your unwrapping and things like that to work better. Um, when I was thinking about it, I thought, well this is just way too big and it's not exactly going to be a nice wine rack because it's two meters and the avatar actually stands about two meters tall so this is an awfully big one and I'm going to go ahead and cut down the size of it. This allows me to show you that we can also change the size here in the dimensions. So for example if I were to change the X right here to um, point Let's see, let's do uh, point 0.2, so it's narrower, which means we need to thin it up a little bit. So I'm going to put in uh, 0.015 for that, and the height of it, I'm going to take down to just one meter. You can see what happens is it has scaled down, um, but what we didn't, what we, what has happened now that we don't like is that the scale has changed again. Changing this is not going to change a whole lot. Let me go ahead and put this back in edit mode and select all. And you can see the UVs here. And if I go ahead and go back into object mode, control A to scale, apply scale. These all change back to one, but my UVs are just fine. So this is good. And anyhow, so that part's done. I just wanted you to see that you can scale it using the dimensions here. And you can uh, apply the scale more than once. It doesn't, it's not like a one-shot deal. So now is the time to make our spiral. Some of the things that I do are going to be a little hard to understand or explain until we actually see the results of what I'm doing. So just don't be confused and bear with me for now. I'm going to go back into solid view here, or shading. I'm going to bring in just a simple plane. And I did, of course, center my cursor before I started. I'm going to rotate this on X. So R, X, 9, 0 on the number pad, and Enter key. Putting this into edit mode, I simply need just one vertex to do what I want to do. So I'm going to hold down my shift and select that one vertex I want to keep. The other ones are highlighted. I'll hit delete and choose vertices. That leaves me with one. Let me go into front view and I'm going to bring that vertex down. I want it to be below the actual origin for now. So I'm going to bring it down to that red line. I'm now going to extrude this vertex and the new vertex will be connected to the old with uh, edge. Why I am choosing to move this vertex or extrude it to a certain point will be um, better understood after I actually do it. So E for extrude and I'm going to bring that down to about here. The angle of which and the length that I've made this edge is going to determine some things about my spiral. To understand them better, this is where me doing it first is going to come into play. In my tool shelf, I'm going to choose screw. When I do this, let me select all here. When I do this, Blender is going to take this edge and create faces all the way around, making this into a screw type of um, piece of geometry. Again, easier to see it after I do it. All right, let's go down to one here, because one is default, as is nine. Nine are default. You can see that this edge here was extruded in nine steps to go around one full time. When it did that, it's actually this edge here that it extruded, right here, okay? 
and extruded it downward and around until it got all the way around. So let me go ahead and do control Z and I'm going to hit screw again. And the reason that I had to do that was because with selecting the other vertices, my operations here, my settings that I can adjust for this tool went away and so now I have them back. Nine steps is pretty good as far as the roundness goes on this. You could up this if you want to. It's up to you. The higher you take this, the more geometry your mesh is going to have. If you're going to be using it on a small project like we are now, taking that number up a little bit is not going to be a big deal. If you're working on a big project, then that's going to be a big deal because it's not only going to do these uh, faces here, and we just now 12 instead of 9, it's going to do it on every screw that we put down, every twist and turn. This here length determined how far these are going to be away from each other. Okay? This angle is going to be from here, the angle that we get going from top to bottom. So let me add a second one, a third one, and I can keep going. And you can see that because my angle here wasn't very deep, it only moved over from here to here, this, this, um, this angle here. So we're getting a, a very long screw before this actually gets where we want it to. And actually it's getting bigger. And it's not what we want. So let me go ahead and hit Control Z. I'm going to take this and I'm going to move it over a little bit. Maybe I'll even move it down a little as well. Select all. And you can hit screw again. So you can adjust this as you're working on it. You can decide how you want this. So there's two. And now you can see I'm getting a nice, a nice screw effect. One, two, three, four, five. That should be pretty good. This one you can see, when you get to the bottom, it keeps going and ends up crossing over itself. So six turns is too much. Let's take it back one. There we go. Now I'm going to select everything. So it's all selected. I'm going to all right click on the top edge loop. And you'll see that it selects it all the way around because this is one constant piece of mesh. It's just turned and turned and turned around. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete vertices. So when it deleted the top edge loop of vertices, it also deleted the faces. But it didn't delete the bottom edge. You see? So now I can go ahead and I can uh, scale this down a little bit if I want to. So select all and scale. I'm going to bring this back by my board, which is right there. It's kind of hard to see at this angle. Oh, let me go into three view and bring it up here. Okay, so there's my board and there's my spiral, right? I'm going to go ahead and scale it down a little bit more. Let's look at it from the front. It's still way too big, so let's scale it down some more. That looks like about the right size, but I think I want a little longer. So S on the Z. Scale it down overall. And I think that's about exactly what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and bring it back to the board again. Blender is freezing up a little bit. Okay, here we go. I'm going to use my arrows to pull it exactly where I want it. So now I'm going to go into top view, 7, and I'm going to twist this around where I want it. So R and turn it. And I think right.
right there is really good. So it's kind of hooked in at this point here. Um, let's see, maybe we can bring it in just a little bit more. I think that's really good. And having it hooked in here is a pretty good thing. It almost looks like you threaded this, like poked it through the wood to keep it in place. Now back in front of you, and I'm going to rotate this. So R, rotate it like this. Back into front of you, I'm going to lift it up. And I want about three of these to fit. So there is one. Alright, now this is just an edge with vertices. So we need to convert this into a mesh. And we can add some round geometry around this. This will become a spline. And a spline you can put geometry on. So back into optic mode. Alt plus C. And we're going to convert to convert from mesh. Uh, curve from mesh. So Alt C is your convert menu. And we're going to choose to turn it to a curve. When we did that, if I go into edit mode now, you'll see it's got normals on it, which come out of the spline. And basically the normals, these black things, are telling the spline which direction it goes in. We don't have to worry about that. You'll also notice that this curve tab came up. So if we go into there, and we choose our fill to be full instead of half, because it's half by default, we tell our mesh that we want it going completely around the spline. We don't want to just make half of it or the bottom of it or the top of it. We want the whole thing all the way around with mesh. So to get that mesh, we have to go to the bevel area and choose depth. As we click on that, you can see mesh is being created. It's in a square. It's got four sides. And if you want, if I go here to uh, full and change it back to half, you see we only have the lower half of this square selected or created. If we go to back, then we only have the one back one. Front will give us the one front one. But full, of course, will give us a full square. We may not want our spiral to be a square, although at this size, it doesn't matter too much. Um, you're not going to be able to really tell that that is a square if you have a good texture on it. And if we do this smooth shading over here. Kind of rounds it out a little bit. But let me go back to flat for a second. Here's our square. You can change that with the resolution. So if I add resolution to it just one, it changes it into a six-sided um, shape. If I go up another one, it takes us up to a um, seven-sided. Nope. Eight sided, sorry. And then, actually, see, makes it much rounder. We don't nearly need it that much. I'm going to take it back down to one. This is a curve because we are, as of course, working with a curve setting. So after you get it where you want it, we do have to convert it back. So Alt plus C and convert mesh from a curve. And there we have our full spiral. What we want to do is we actually want to put this in edit mode, select all, and choose remove doubles. Not always, but quite a few times when you work with curves and you work with different tools on the curve, these vertices could end up being split. So you would have like it going around but not connecting all the way around. So if I choose remove doubles and look up here, it says zero vertices were removed. So actually, this curve did really good on creating new mesh. We have no doubles. Always check, though, because when you're starting to edit things, if you have doubles and you don't realize it, it could make for messy um, results on things like unwrapping or importing with land impact and such. So when I select all this and do the remove doubles, I can then come in here, select one edge loop, and you see that it goes all the way around. 
I'm going to use Control E to bring up my Edges menu again, and you'll recognize this where I choose Mark Seam. After marking that seam, I can select All. I could choose U, and again, the only choice here that looks at Mark Seams is Unwrap, and so I unwrap it. You'll see that it has been turned into one long line along the bottom of the mesh. What I can do here to even this out is roll, right click on the bottom edge, hit W, and choose a line on the Y. And I could do that for each edge loop going up this curve shape. And now it's all even all the way across. And it is within the boundaries because we set to the constraint to image bounds when we were doing our board, remember? So now you have this here. I'm going to go ahead and go into object mode, go into edit mode on the board, select all, and we'll see that this here is far enough above this that we can actually use one texture for both the board and the spirals here. Okay, so these spirals, if you've noticed, have blank ends. These are hollow. We can do a few things. We can actually go in here and fill in this space with F. Again, how I did that was I alt right clicked on this end edge loop and hit F and it fills it in with a face. Once you do that, you do want to hit U for unwrap, and you'll see that it's really big, and it's right there. Let me go ahead and do the other end in a little bit of a different way. This one, what I'm going to do is come down to this edge loop, and I'm going to just simply all um, actually, what I'll do first is Alt-R or Control-R and create an edge loop here. I'll take this edge loop and I'm going to hit S, 0, Enter. And that brings it to a point. And that does not change our UVs at all. So either way that you want to do it, you can. If you decide to do it this way up here, you will want to take this piece of... Um, UV, and you will want to scale it way down and bring it down to maybe over here. So let me select all of this now. Scale this way down. And just grab it and put it over here somewhere if you want to do it that way. So it's your choice. Um, I kind of like flat on the top because it's at the bigger part of the spiral. And down here, it just kind of gives it a finished look and end, a point at the end. After you get the first one made, you can select it, go into front view, hit shift plus D, and that duplicates it. I'm just moving my mouse around, and the duplicated copy is going with it. Now I can hit R, or a right mouse button, and it'll let go of the duplicated copy and put it right back where it came from. So there it is. I can hit G for grab, Z for the axis, and that will help bring it straight down underneath. Again, let me just go ahead and close this up a little bit. Shift plus D, right mouse click to snap it back, G, Z to bring it straight down. And it's at this point that you can decide whether these are too close together, too far apart. Um, you can select all three of them by shift right clicking on them. Come down here to this pivot point menu and choose individual origins. And you can rotate them if you want to. Oh, actually, the reason that that looked weird when I was just going to do that, let me see if I can show you a little bit again. R. Okay, it's not doing it like I expect it to do. 
that's because the origins are down here because I edited them and I moved them around and you can't move the origin in edit mode so let me click here and origins and geometry on each of them now when I select all three of them and I choose to rotate them I can rotate them each individually but the same amount so it's up to you I mean you're not stuck with having them at that angle if after you've duplicated them and you thought that just isn't exactly the way that I wanted it okay so now as far as the texture on this goes you can just use a rusty one if you want to and it will um, work great I guess the duplicated objects get to have or they keep not only the shape and everything of the first object they also keep the actual unwrapping let me show you here so as you can see this first one this is where it's unwrapping was remember the little end there so all three of these have the exact same unwrapping so making one texture will put them will have them all looking identical and that's really it for the spirals so as you can imagine the wine bottle is going to tip upside down going into this spiral and that's going to hold it on our wall I can um, take this after I have them all where I want them I can use Control J to join them. Going into um, origin again, I can set the origin to the geometry, and that puts the origin in the middle of all three of these. If I go into edit mode on this, all three of them, you can't tell that they're all there, but they're all right on top of each other. Here is the um, UVs for them, so let me get an uh, image for us real quick. Okay, so I have a texture I'm going to use, and I really don't feel like editing it in GIMP, so I'm going to end up moving my UVs around. But you can see here, um, at the bottom, they're all selected. And now if I drag in my image, right like this, you'll see that it is... Um, associated with these now I'm going to take these and I'm going to rotate them 180 degrees whoops so all these are selected rotate 180 degrees I'm going to grab them and push them straight up and they won't go beyond the edge of course because constraint image balance is on and now that's all good so let me go back into object mode here. And if I go into texture shading, you can see that my spirals have their uh, texture on it. And I kind of like the variation here. Because this texture is going the length of this, I can make repeats to make this a little less um, gradient looking if I want to. I could add a bit of a darker color to it. I could come into my UVs and GIMP or Photoshop and I can, you know, really change it up and everything. But you'll see that after you add an image, you can still move the UVs around again, just like we did with the board. Okay, so there's our, um, there's our spirals. They're supposed to be metal on our wood background, and the next part will be making the bottle, and I will be showing you a new tool or a tool that we haven't explored as beginners to make that bottle as well. So stay tuned. Have fun and get this done. We'll see you next one. Please make sure that you subscribe and like and share the channel and help other Blender beginners um, join us with this. It can be a lot of fun.